But if you will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more. Don't gossip him in the prayer group. Take one or two more. That in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. Next verse. And if you shall neglect to hear thee, tell it unto the church. Church here doesn't mean announcement. It means tell the pastor. But if you neglect to hear the church, the authority, let him be unto thee as an hidden man and a publican. Next verse. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you shall lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. 19. And again I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my father which is in heaven. So again, where he talked about anything, you know, the reasons between your brother. All right, now, that means whatever you do amongst men, which has to do with walking in love, is done by God. Anything that is related to walking in love is done by God. So, heaven and earth. Remember, Jesus said, Our Father, which art in heaven. And remember, I have told you before, heaven is not where you go when you die. Heaven is God's space on earth. The space of God on earth is heaven. I've given you the illustration before. The president of the United States of America flies Air Force One. Air Force One is not a particular carrier. Any vehicle that the president of the United States Portus walks into, that vehicle becomes Air Force One. If he comes to Nigeria today and decides to fly Ibom Air, for the period he's in Ibom Air, is Air Force One. So, Air Force One is not a particular carrier. The president is Air Force One. So, wherever the president enters is Air Force One. So, heaven is not a particular location. Heaven is God's space on earth. So, anywhere God is becomes heaven. And I have news for you. He lives in you. You are the heaven and earth of God. Immortality in mortality. Heaven and earth. I'm teaching good. Stay with me. I'm almost done. Ay, ay, ay. So heaven is God's space. That is anywhere God dwells in the earth is called heaven or heavenlies. Now, do people die and equally go to God? Yes. People die and go to God. But anywhere God is, is referred to as heaven. It's actually an Old Testament explanation of where God dwells. The word heaven is an Old Testament explanation of where God dwells. The atmospheric heaven is used as a figure of speech to explain that God is expansive. God is expansive. That's why the atmospheric heaven is used. To explain the fact that God is expansive. You can't lock him up in a location. That's why the word heaven, which is the atmosphere, is used to explain that reality called God. Am I teaching? That God is unseen in the physical realm and he dwells within the earth. But wherever you hear our father which art in heaven... Hallowed be thy name. That prayer, the father is not someone you see when you die. It's a seller point. The father is not someone you see when you die. He is someone that is already dwelling amongst men. It's not a future reality. It's a present reality. In fact, in Matthew's gospel, chapter 1, verse 23, one of the names that Jesus was referred to is God with us. Who is with us? God. What is the name? Ima, Ima, Noel. 
Matthew 28, 20. Lo, I will be with you always. Huh? What did he say? I am with you always till when? The end of the year. So it's not an end of the world disposition. And I'm sure you, you know we've done all of that study. So that statement in itself, when you say that all authority in heaven and earth is given unto me, already shows you a relationship between heaven and earth. Mortality and immortality. Immortality in mortality. Heaven and earth is a relationship. Hallelujah. And you know we said the gospel is a relationship. Did we say that? The gospel is a relationship. The resurrection of Jesus, which is the gospel, is a relationship. It's not just a mere event. It's a relationship. It's a rela First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 1, 3, and 4. As I begin to round up. <clears throat> Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand. Next verse. By which also you are saved, if you keep in memory that which I preach unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again. The third day, according to the scriptures. I told you that the word raised, anastasis, in the Greek is not something that happened. It's a present continuous. Raised means he was raised, he is raised, he is, he will, he is raised. He is raised. He. It's not a past event. It's a present continuous in the Greek. He was raised last. He is raised now. He remains raised. That is how it is in the Greek. Are you following? 1 Corinthians 15, 14. 1 Corinthians 15, 14. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Verse 17. And 17. If Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. You are yet in your sins. So it's a present tense reality. Why is it a present tense reality? Because the gospel is a relationship. The gospel is about the resurrection. And the resurrection is a relationship. That's why you say, Lo, I am with you. That's the gospel. I am with you always. The gospel is a relationship. Lo, I am with you always unto the end of the earth. So the gospel which is about the resurrection of Jesus is a relationship. 